Welcome to another episode of Political Perspective. Today, the 23rd day of October 2024. My name is Ifani Okali. All right, in the studio, we have the special advisor on media to the governor of Fabia State. His name is Honorable, I'll put Honorable <laughs> Ferdinand Ekoma. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. And thank you, viewers, for joining us on the show. All right, without taking much of our time, we would like to hit uh, the nail on the head. All right, uh, Ferdinand, um, your principal or the state, um, the administration of uh, Governor Ali Soti have taken um, a year plus. We would like to know most of the things the governor have done. Thank you once again for having me. Um, well, the governor, as you are aware, was uh, elected, um, so to say, on the 18th day of March 2023, which was when the governorship election took place, when the people unanimously came out and elected him as their governor, even though there was a stalemate as a result of uh, a failed attempt by the then ruling government to, you know, torpedo the victory which the people had already given to the governor by trying to, you know, smuggling fake results mm -hmm. from Obingwa local government. So that led to the, the, the delay in the announcement of the results. But finally, the governor was, um, you know, declared and properly returned as the duly elected governor of Abia State on the 22nd of March, 2023. And uh, without any other, uh, shortly after his inauguration on the 29th of May, 2023, he swung into action. First, he declared state of emergency in six key areas. Uh, road infrastructure, education, health, security, and of course, waste management. Anybody who knew the state of our health sector, or who moves around now, uh, go to Absut, go to the diagnostic center, go to the general hospital at Amachara, mm -hmm. and uh, some other places will attest that indeed there is a, a completely, you know, turnaround of events as far as our health sector is concerned. Um, the governor ensured that there was immediate action to try to change the narrative for the better, by directing and ensuring that the uh, reconstruction and retrofitting of those hospitals happened, and the modern equipment were provided to ensure that the required services, you know, are provided as at all times. For example, if you look at the diagnostic center, go to the eye clinic there. Um, don't take my word for it. Just go there, and if you have somebody who is grounded in optometry. Take the person to look at the machines that are there. Look at the people that are working there. Look at the kind of services that they are delivering to the public. If you go there, say, take somebody that is grounded. Go there, let the person look at the personnel that are there. Let them look at the equipment that are there. Then you will attest to the fact that what we have there is one of the best east or east of the Niger. It is what is verifiable. So then you go to Amacha and you see the renovation that happened and the equipment that has been provided. The same thing at have suits. At this one, we've not. That is the truth. We've not even done one quarter of what we want to do as far as we are concerned. Nothing extraordinary has happened. But we've been able to clean up the place. We've been able to inspire that sense of duty. We've been able to review a lot of things to ensure that the place begins to function the way it should, the way a hospital of such magnitude to be. And um, just recently, the governor uh, appointed a renowned Eurosurgeon as the, honorable, the new Honorable Commissioner for Health for Abia State in the person of Professor uh, Bonne Auche. Um, he's so grounded. If you Google about him, not just uh, is, we're not talking about uh, an aeroplane Professor, <laughs> and we are talking about somebody who is grounded locally and internationally, who is a, a household name. And when you look at what he's bringing to the table, then you will know that by this time next day, then we'll be singing a new song in our health sector. So, ah, uh, in that area, we could see that there is a direction. 
we could see that there is a standard that is being set. We could see that the government is passionate, is committed, is sincere, is dedicated to turning around our health sector and ensuring that uh, the philosophy of uh, health is wealth is actually upheld and practicalized in Abia State. If you look at the education sector, education received the highest budgetary allocation in this uh, in the 2024 budget. Mm. And this is unprecedented, whopping 20%, unprecedented in our history. It's because of the priority the governor attaches to education. And uh, I think it was George Washington who said, the former American president, who said that uh, our effort as a nation can never be swifter than our efforts in education. So what, whatever you strive to do, if you've not, if not been able to lay the foundation, a solid foundation, if you've not been able to make education the bedrock, then it will be difficult for you to succeed because everything stands, you know, succeeds or fails on the altar of the kind of education that have been, you know, that has been provided for the populace. So with what was allocated, the Ministry of Education, led by the Honorable Commissioner for Education, Professor Uche Muche, um, you know, he swung into action you know, based on the directive of the governor, we started what we call needs assessment, you know, of our schools in the 184 wards of the state. We're able to identify schools, you know, that are going to be rebuilt, that are going to be retrofitted. We are talking about model schools. That's the standard. So we were able to tell the different local governments to identify those schools that are in a state of decay, that require, you know, urgent attention. And of course, a few have been done. And uh, you know, we what we did, we choose uh, um, how many per local government, per, uh, per local government, I think six, about six per local government, mm. multiply it by 70, you know what that means? So that is a massive intervention. And we're not just talking, we are backing it up with action. Because um, something in the education sector requires to go through the right processes. People just think that maybe you just wake up and erect structures and you say you have built school. No, that's not how we want to operate. What we are doing, you know, getting the right infrastructure in place. If, for example, they come to your local government, mm. they, just, they don't just go and begin to erect school. First and foremost, we need to know does this place have the required population of students that will be attending, you know, uh, uh, in such a school if you spend, let's say, 150 million, mm. you know, reconstructing and uh, retrofitting and equipping all the schools, will you, will you be able to get the right return? Do we have any need to match schools? You know, all those things we are taking into consideration. And what they want to do, in the modern schools, not just to rate a structure. First, you make sure you have all the layers. You have all the, you know, departments. Mm. You have where, the, whether it's the headmaster or principal will live. You fence the place, you have security posts, you provide all the necessary you know, infrastructure, all the necessary materials, all the necessary equipment required to ensure that you know, impactful education uh, uh, exists in our schools. Those are some of the things we are doing in our education sector. Just recently, we brought a very reputable consultancy firm into the States that trained, you know, 200 master trainers. Hmm. They were trained, probably trained. The government spent a lot of <laughs> to ensure that these people were trained by these consultants to now train, to now train others. Hmm. Because it, it, it's one thing to have teachers and it's another thing to have teachers who have the competence, who have the technical know-how, hmm. who have the passion, who have the desire to impact the required knowledge. So those are some of the things we do, and the impacts are already being felt. And also, as part of that effort to ensure that education reclaims its pride of place, the governor ensured, gave an approval for, you know, the extension of uh, age of retirement from 60 to 65 years. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, you know, well commendable. That is commendable because it will, you know, give, make us to be able to explore that experience and knowledge mm -hmm. that are associated with old age, you know, you know, from our teachers. Mm. Beyond that, the governor has rolled out discriminatory 
incentives, incentive packages that would inspire our teachers, or inspire our teachers to go back to the classrooms. Over the years, a lot of people abandoned the classrooms and went to the ministry because teachers were being old, left, right, and center. So the few of them were just, uh, when the government was owing everybody, was just managing to pay those in the ministry. You know, you are aware of the so-called core and non-core civil servants. So most of them ran away from the schools. And what have we done? The governor said, we're not going to force people because somebody must have the passion to teach, must have the desire. Yes, they may have, you know, been employed originally as teachers, but then we need to come up with policies and programs and incentives that will encourage them to return to the classrooms. And that, those are the things the government is doing. I'm just trying to scratch them. You know, there are a whole lot of things, a lot of policies. Sorry, not programs. taking you back. Um, I know that uh, um, you've said something about the core and non-core um, civil, civil servant. Please, our viewers would like you to explain more because out there, most people have been murmuring, saying mm. a lot of things. So it's better you are here in the studio to tell them more about the core and non-core civil servant. Okay, thank you. Um, it's something that was uh, very notorious, if you like, <laughs> before the advent of this government. People were called non-core civil servants. And that will form the justification for them to be owed. And now, on assumption of office, the governor, the present governor, Dr. Alex Oti, OFR, has abolished that. And that was just why I think a few weeks ago you saw the video of uh, uh, Abiapoli staff. Okay, spontaneous mm. celebration. Mm. Because they received, I think, three months arrears of the multiple of, of, of uh, the 32 months arrears mm. they, are being, they were being owed. These areas were not incurred by the Alexotti led government. Mm. But because we do not recognize the principle of core and non core, first and foremost, on assumption of office, the governor has ensured that the subvention is paid religiously, without any disruption, without any interruption. Beyond that, with the appointment of a new rector, there are policies and programs, intentional policies and programs geared towards turning the place around. So, as part of solving the problem, mm. which has affected the school over the years, the 32 most um, salary arrears that we owed them, just like the governor promised to clear those arrears of other mm. institutions like uh, APSU, mm. SEMB, ASUBEB, Abiapoli, Abia State College of Education and Technical Arrow School, Hospital Management Board, Abia State University Teaching Hospital, and the rest of them. They all have several months of arrears, totaling about 18 point something billion. Mm. The facts are there. The mm. figures are there. Mm. All these things were calculated. You will see Abiapoli, you see the number of moons they are owed. You see the amount. You see Aseta. All these things were, you know, broken down. Mm. The facts are there. Okay. So the government started to clear these arrears. So the way it's been done, you take like three moons, mm. you clear. You know, over time, the arrears will be cleared. So the government is doing it because we do not, like I said earlier, do not recognize that philosophy of core and non-core. Mm. So as far as this government is concerned, there is nothing like core and non-core civil servant. Mm. If you are a civil servant, you are a civil servant. You've been employed by the government and it's incumbent on the government to support those, you know, parastatos, those institutions that belong to the government to provide services to our people. Some of these services in the real source of it are social services. Mm. So you can't abdicate, you know, uh, 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 your responsibility. Mm. You can't say, ah, they are non-core. Mm. Okay? Uh, they generate revenue. Because of that, you don't want to pay them. So you are hurting the state. Because that is why you are a government. You receive allocation. You generate money. And if you cannot pay teachers, if you cannot pay the staff of uh, such a tertiary institution, mm. then what services are you rendering? You are not being altruistic. So our own government is so committed to ensuring regular, you know, payment of these salaries and also providing them with other incentives that would help those institutions. So there is nothing like core and no core civil servants as far as this present government is All right, concerned. thank you for that clarification. There is another question I would like to ask you. You know, at the last uh, um, um, chat with the governor, um, he mentioned when they asked him about uh, salary too, he mentioned that uh, um, it, it's not by force for him to pay the salary because it, it was on record and uh, 
Um, nobody can point him gun on the head for him to pay the salary. But what I'm asking, is it this government, is it not a continuum? Because when we talk about salaries, other uh, uh, administration work, Owing. Does it mean the governor don't have the right to pay the salary? No, I think that's a distortion. I'm just giving you, even okay. even before that media chat, mm. even before that media chat, yeah. the governor had already started paying, clearing at the eyes of some institutions. Okay. So what happened was that the institutions I mentioned here, Abiapoli, mm. Aseta, Asobeb, SEMB, uh, School of Health Technology, and all the rest of them, were all listed. I have the approval, I have the document where it was broken down. So, now the government said it was going to start that payment and, uh, um, by August ending. Mm. Now, there were more verifications of individuals who, prior to that time, had issues. Okay? Okay. Some persons had issues. Okay. Remember that some of these verification exercises, a lot of factors are involved. There are some people who changed their phone numbers without going to their ministries or department or agencies mm. to ensure would they link these things back to their documents. For example, they look at your account. The phone number that was used to open that account is different from the one that is attached to your details now. You have people who change their names, mm. who got married and changed their names without going to ensure that these things are in sync. What is in the you know account details is the yes. same thing with what they are bearing. Good. A whole lot of other issues. Some people moved from one bag to another without going to synchronize these things. So those were the challenges. So when the documentation for this payment of their arrears were completed, it turned out that there were further, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, there were further names that were brought mm. based on people who did verification late, mm. who were able to solve their problems. And these names and the amounts involved we are brought in so because of that the government decided to move that payment which had been planned to commence by august ending mm. so during the media chat the the, the journalist are asked the question <laughs> you know trying to make it look as if the governor said he wasn't going to be he incurred because he, they put it no you if, see most times information is power no yeah. no but these things have been explained uh -huh. it's just a matter of people following up okay because the governor had already, the thing was already public, we had already communicated okay. in one of the media chats, okay. I mean post esco media chats, okay. where these things were explained, and those journalists were there, and we said these things were, you know, the governor has given his approval. But don't we blame any... No, 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 we're not blaming anybody, I'm just saying, uh, okay. this is a further elucidation, it's you know, right. that I'm just it's doing, okay. we're not blaming anybody, mm. that's, that's the beauty of it, yes. okay? Yes. A journalist can take you to task, mm. and then, uh, so, so what the governor said, I will pay, I have said I will pay, mm. But it would be unfair to give the impression that I incurred when I was not the one. So you can't put a gun to my... And that was yeah. the aspect. The, the, <laughs> that was the, the aspect. The, the, the statement triggered a lot of things. Though, yeah, so so, so the facts are very clear. Mm -hmm. The governor does not believe that workers should be owed. The governor is a, an economist. A first-class economist. A practical one for that matter. He understands that, that payment of salary is one of the ways to engineer economic growth. And that has always been in his position. When he talks about velocity of money, mm. it's a money changing hands, you know, moving from one hand to another. And money having activities happen. Mm. Mm. Because according to him, when you pay these people, they will be able to spend. It's just like you, okay? If people uh, enjoy your services mm. without supporting you, mm. without doing the needful, mm. then you have staff that you will want to pay. How mm. are you going to pay them? If you don't have any avenue of generating money, yes. if you pay, you don't pay them. How would they be able to patronize the man, the mama put man that may be selling downstairs? You're right. If they don't patronize likewise, the mama, put, if, how would likewise the, mama the put government? You? If the government patronizes us, so, uh, exactly. Uh, that's, <laughs> <laughs> very but that's what we are talking about. All right. So that's uh, that's just the velocity of money we are talking about. So the governor is poised to doing that. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we we'll like to go for a short break, and when we we'll come back, we will continue. Don't forget, we have. A wonderful man with us today. I will call him an August visitor. Mm -hmm. uh, still, Ferdinand Ekoma. Experience the smooth and strong feeling that consistently surpasses expectation. 
leading the way in high performance lubricants. Master Supermoto Oil is as durable as Titanium. Introducing ABN Radio and Television, your new favorite app. Stay informed, entertained, and connected with the latest news, music, and videos from Nigeria and beyond. Download the ABN Radio and Television app now on Google Play and enjoy. Live streaming of news, sports, music, and entertainment programs. On demand access to your favorite shows and podcasts. Breaking news updates and notifications. Exclusive videos and interviews. Personalized experience with customizable settings. Get started in three easy steps. Open Google Play Store on your device. Search for APN Radio slash TV. Click install and start enjoying your new favorite app. Join the APN Radio slash television community today and stay connected to what matters most. Okay, welcome back again to the political perspective. Um, still with me here is uh, Ferdinand Ekoma, and uh, we have been discussing a lot about uh, the Abia state government and things that have been happening since so one year plus. Um, Ferdinand, there is another question that has been bothering people out there. With all this, the governor has done about uh, putting things in order about the civil servants. Last time we've been hearing about ghost workers. Are we sure that ghost workers are not in the civil servant service? Sorry. Okay, well... Uh, because we, we've seen a lot of processes uh, the government yes. have been doing since they came into yeah. uh, power. So Exactly. You know, the truth is that the problem we have here uh, is a problem that has been here over the years. At a point in our life as a people, as a government, they made it look as if government is the most lucrative place to work in. The civil service made it look as if it's or it was the most lucrative place to work in. There is nothing wrong in people working in the civil service. But government should be able to build the right you know, atmosphere, the right infrastructure, the enabling environment, mm. a system, a civil service that is robust, that is productive. Unfortunately, what happened here over the years was reckless employment of people, including those who have no business being in the civil service, including those who are not doing anything. At the risk of sounding disrespectful, the truth is that there are a lot of people who are doing nothing in the civil service. I won't blame them. That is the truth. Because there is poverty in the land, there is unemployment, so anybody that had a relation or friend or associates, you know, will say, employ me, help me get a job in the civil service, and your name will be written down smuggled somewhere. They'll begin to pay you peanuts. Meanwhile, you are not even growing in knowledge and experience. You are not growing. Sometimes people are taking this thing because they have no choice. They have no alternative. Mm -hmm. But in the real sense of it, sometimes these things make people redundant. Even mentally. You say you are mentally redundant because you are just kept in one oh no, you know, decayed office. You are doing nothing. When we came on board, if you were at the secretary, you will share tears. We've not completely overcome the problem. You come to the, I think the first or second floor, you saw dozens of people sitting down. They have lockers, tables in front of them, doing absolutely nothing. So you find out that people were employed without job descriptions. People were not productively engaged. So, to a great extent, that was hurting the system. Now, everybody wanted to be a BAMSEC. Everybody wanted to be a director. Growing up, you and I, as kids, we admired BAMSECs. We admired directors. Mm. When you saw them then, you would know that these people passed through the rudiments of all the, you know, civil service trainings and all the rest of them. And they were being taken care of. They were being provided with official vehicles. They lived a modest life, but you, you saw that everything was in place. They were being paid as and when due, and when they retired, they continued to receive their pension. 
But here in Abi, over the years, you see people being paid half pension. Meanwhile, you are doing that because you do not have the resources to accommodate all the people that have retired. Mm. You are still churning out more directors, making more directors, appointing 30 palm sex. Who are you all doing? So you are destroying a system and it was just a matter of time before this place will collapse. Thank God for the arrival, for the intervention of Governor Lex Soti. Because it's actually in the interest of everyone mm. to have a civil service that is decent, that is organized, that is well structured, that is productive, then you know if you have 23 palm sex, you know that those who will succeed them are climbing through, you know, climbing the ladder through the right channel. Mm. And a director, when you become a director, you spend eight years in line with the federal government, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, structure or establishment. Mm as it's being replicated here now, you go on retirement after you must have spent eight years on it. And that will give others the opportunity. Those, but this one, you, ask, you come to a particular ministry, you have multiple directors. And they now find themselves, if government find itself, now creating mushrooms, uh, 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 <laughs> departments and agencies and all the rest of them just to accommodate the people. So it wasn't in the interest of anyone. So, that was why, yes, we encountered a lot of ghost workers. And we are struggling with that. We are battling with that. And the thing had different dimensions. There were ghost workers that were not coming to work. Mm. There were ghost workers that were literally non-existent. There were people who were earning salary, but they were, live, they were living abroad. When this government came, we did verification, including physical verification. Some persons came, did verification, and disappeared afterward. So at a point, the governor directed for um, commissioners and all the rest of them to, you know, put mechanism in place to checkmate and find out. What they discovered that most of the people that came and did verification disappeared. <laughs> you saw the number of people that said they were working at uh, uh, Abia uh, office in mm -hmm. Lagos and Abuja. Outrageous. So most of these things affected the system. And we, uh, it, it was... It's naturally impossible for people who are going to be affected to be happy. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing, the government is working assiduously to overcome this problem, to erase anything ghost worker in our system, because it's not in anybody's interest. The governor has four years to spend here. A maximum, if the people magnanimously re-elect him, he will spend a maximum of eight years here. The state will remain and the governor will go. So now that he's in charge, he considers it a, a noble obligation to do everything humanly possible to at least so structure or restructure this place, set a standard that will benefit everybody even after he must have left. So we have that problem, but we are dealing with it courageously because you don't have any choice to solve the problem. If you don't solve it, it's just a matter of time before it consumes you. So we are on it. All right. I'm not uh, still on the ghost workers. You've said a little, a little about them. But people have been saying... Uh, different places talking about sacking workers doing that. We want to hear from you. The civil servant, how many people have been sacked? Or are they sacked or did they not sack them? Because these are questions people watching us would like to know. Thank God you're here today. Okay, so there are two issues I would deal with here as far as this issue of sack or no sack is concerned. One, because it's always good when you're discussing such sensitive issues, mm. when you are talking about human beings, uh, you know, our people's neighbors, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if uh, there is someone that has been unjustly sacked, somebody that has been, uh, you know, that has, the thing has affected in one way or the other, mm. we don't expect the person to smile, to be happy, mm. no matter how truthful you are. But the most important thing, some of us will try at all times to put the record straight, to speak truth, to say the truth, um, even when some persons may not be comfortable with it. The people that uh, we affected recently or that uh, are going to be affected, some of them are town planners. You know, in prior to the arrival of this government, mm. They had a system where what they called generate and pay. Mm. You have different parastatos. They were running their own 
I don't know whether to call it subsystem. Mm. They will generate money, they spend, they do whatever they like. So in town plan, you have, I think, over 400 town planners. People working in town. I just I buy a loan. Mm. <laughs> you, know what, you know what that means? Only a buy. <laughs> yeah. You know, so uh, it's, it was a problem because they were like ad hoc staff. Mm. They're not regulars, but they were not being paid mm. from the office of accountant general mm-hmm. and regular civil servants. Mm-hmm. They were engaged by different town planning authorities on the, in that zone. Okay. Obiungwa, Osisioma, Norabana, North, South, Tugunu, they were all affected. That's where most of the population, the numbers came from. Mm. Now, you know this is not sustainable. Why? Because the government came and stopped everything called generate and pay. One of the major reasons for the stoppage was that it was the most notorious form of extortion. Mm. That is why you will just drop uh, uh, a tipper of sand. People will come and paste 10 notices. So in the bid for people to generate money, to make money and pay themselves, there's innocent citizens, the ordinary people, became the greatest victims. People were being extorted, people were paying all kinds of things. Mm. And then government now says, everywhere now, including a BCA that you see here, there is nothing like generate and pay. You have been employed by the government. You work for the government. If there's everything, anything you're generating, that is why the issue of TSA came up. Mm. Treasury single account. The money goes there. It is incumbent on government to take care of you, to pay you, take care of your welfare when you retire. Because the government is building a system that is sustainable to pay you even after you must have retired. Let's use BC as an example. Government is working out to, you know, ensure that they are probably integrated for their pension, mm. for them to begin to receive their regular pensions. Good one. If you allow them to run the place and do that generator pay, if I am the DG, I will just let them make money for myself and retire and go. The staff who would have worked there, when they retire, they face that problem. Because the place, the system, you know how the place is. The place has not even taken care of itself. Mm. Let alone build the structure, the mechanism that will be able to pay people after they must have retired. So that is why you are a governor. You take the boot by the horns. You did the right. You, it's, it's not easy. You can't do these things without people vilifying you. But the most important thing is that the governor is so altruistic about it. And it's a matter of time before those who may not. A lot of people are appreciating what the governor is doing. But then those who have failed to understand we are not going to fire them. Our job is to explain, to make them understand, and to tenaciously ensure we do these things and do them right. Over time, they will begin to appreciate, especially when some of them may have, you know, would have retired. So, what we did in that area, and that's what led to, to say, the government said, this number, we are going to absorb some, while some will be paid off. And that's what government has done. Okay. Because you, you can't just fool yourself, just because you want to please people, you want to impress people. They have no places they are working. Everybody is moving to go and serve notices, to go and do all kinds of things, to make money for the town planning authorities. The government said, no, we don't want to practice that kind of system. The government would not have lost anything if it continues to, if it had decided to continue to unleash all these people on the populace. The people will still be crying and they will say, oh, there is no change now, the same extortion. Mm. But you can't go to Abba today. And tell me that all those nonsense extortions that were happening prior to now, that they are not happening again. And these are facts. We can move around the city and check. Before they will come to your house, uh, business premises permit, operational license, uh, 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 water mm. permit, mm. Can, 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 all <laughs> kinds of things. You know, they were facing all kinds of things. But this government has said, we will operate differently. So the other uh, set of people, that we are affected. We are people that we are illegally employed. And we said that without missing words. I listened to Governor Kezik Bazou's interview on the 29th day of, uh, I think that was July 2022, mm-hmm. where the governor said emphatically that the, uh, the total uh, number of Fabia workforce was 32,000. According to him, it was 32,000. The facts are there. That was what the governor said. And emphatically stated that there was no vacancy. There was no room for employment of it. I said 2022. Mm. I didn't say 2012. 2022. 
That was little over one year mm. before, or less than one year before the governor left. Mm. Now, he said there was no vacancy, there was no room for employment of any kind. In the same 2022, about two months later or thereabout, they started massive employment. Meanwhile, people were being owed several months of accumulated salary and pension arrears. Those who were being paid pension, we were being paid half pension. The same government that said they didn't have resources to pay salary, to pay pension, suddenly decided to employ people, to saturate the place with thousands of people. Fazi, as I speak to you now, after the verification where we are, because there are some numbers, there are some problems, mm. persons that still have issues with the verification, we have 60 something thousand, about 63,000 or thereabout, but it's over 60,000 workers in other states civil service. I'm not aware of any state of the federation that has that number. Mm. It is scary, it's frightening. We begin to ask yourself, how did this happen? They churned in thousands of people. Even prior to, so what some of us now discovered that even before that, was, that statement was made, it looked as if a lot of thousands of people had been illegally or through the back door. Let me not say illegally. They had the powers to employ people. Okay? Mm. Because it was a legitimate government. But they should, the modus operandi, you were, you were engaging people where they were doing nothing. And you didn't have the resources to pay. And you were employing. So now, those people they now employ, employed from uh, that uh, December, mm. that uh, November, December, 2022, and those they employed in early 2023 before the election, which, of course, we are employed for purposes of winning the election. The government said no, because we now discovered that most of them had not received a damn prompt to, to, to that time. Mm. And what the, the ones they paid, they just paid them a month before they, to have evidence that they are civil servants. And some of the employment were only backdated. So, the government, you need to just tell yourself, it's difficult. So, when you see them fabricate all kinds of things, say, if we sack, who and who did we sack? Why would Governor Alex Oti want to sack anybody? So you can't saturate the place with people who are not... In fact, we are still thinking, the people we have, where are we going to engage most of them? I say, go to many offices, you see people who are doing nothing. On assumption of office, we had 900 and something, over 900 people working in government house alone. 900 human beings working in government house alone. That decayed government house. That's rotten place. Yes, it was rotten. We are trying to upgrade the place and turn things around. But it's a, it's a, it, it was an eyesore. And that's where you have over 900 people working, doing absolutely nothing. You think you are helping. Will it not be better that you build an industry, you build a factory, you build the necessary infrastructure, create the enabling environment, and support and inspire the people to run their private businesses or even work for government, and at least ensure they are working and they are, they are productive. Mm. So, this government did not sack anybody. It's as difficult as it is for those affected to accept. They know that what this government is doing is in the interest of everyone. We know that if you were being paid 50000 or 40000 you were you were a beneficiary of that bazaar. It's natural that you would be angry. We understand. But we, yes, uh, we can equally apologize, saying for you, Apologize to you for so being a was, victim. So it was bazaar. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can apologize to you for being a victim. But uh, then we do not have a choice than to audaciously confront this problem and uh, bring an end to it. All right, let's go to infrastructure before other ones. Yeah, uh, You said something how the governor and the government have been doing on infrastructure. Though we've seen a lot of things, uh, ABN TV, we've gone around and see most of the Operation Free Portal or what? Yeah, then Zero Portal. Zero Portal, we saw some reconstruction of uh, roads. And the other time, the governor said they have fixed 108 roads. And this have triggered a lot of questions from Abians and some other people saying, where are the roads? Then, before then, during the, um, during the before the election, when they were doing the campaign, um, Governor Alex Soti has been mentioning, and people, we are so happy with that, he has been saying about 
transparency and also making things open if he will be elected. Now he is the executive governor of Abia State and Abians are expecting to see that transparency. One, how money is coming. Two, how monies are used, mainly on the infrastructure level. I would like you to say that, though, uh, most people will say they would like the governor to say that, but I would like you to <laughs> give us some hint about that. You know, this, if you check, even we have it on video where most of the campaigns he has been talking about transparency mm. because he used it to get minds of Abian, which Abians voted for him. So mm. now they are expecting that transparency when. Most times, the other uh, government were doing something. They say, Alex will come out and say, even some interviews, he will say, these people are not telling us how our money is, uh, uh, where our money is in. So, uh, this is his government now. So, Abians would like to know how the monies are moving. I think Abians know. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, those uh, in law, we say, we say, we say we I think because that's how why, say. why I'm saying this, you know, this I, I could remember out. she'll be either the uh, um, the the third or fourth episode of uh, um, Alice Soti speaks to Abians. When mm. there's a question, yeah, uh, someone, a journalist asks him mm. about something like this. He said, um, if you take, uh, for example, he used the, for example, uh, if you go to a native doctor, for a native doctor to prepare charm for you, and during that process, you then ask the native doctor, uh, how do you prepare the charm? Uh, he looks on her. So he said something that he won't like to tell people because he, that thing is automobile. Okay. So, okay, so okay, I will, okay, I will I like understand. you to. I will, I will, okay, yes. Okay, okay. So because that understand. transparency is not there. I remember, no. Uh. No. I, maybe he misunderstood what happened. Okay. Somebody asked a question. Mm. Made reference to the things he has been doing. Mm. To the giant fries. To what is happening in the area of road infrastructure. Mm. And all the rest of them. And said... Where are you getting the funds? Mm -hmm. The opposition has been accusing you mm -hmm. of reckless borrowing and all the rest of them. Mm -hmm. And from what you have explained now, you said we've not borrowed. Mm -hmm. So where are you getting the funds? Mm -hmm. That was how the, the, the governor now drew that analogy mm -hmm. to say, this is my trade secret. Because even during his campaigns, he said that repeatedly, it is my trade secret. Don't forget that I'm a banker. So it's not an issue of transparency. First and foremost, in this concept, what is transparency? Whatever that is, or whatever accrues to the states mm. on a monthly public mm. uh, uh, on a monthly basis mm. is public knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay, what comes from fact? Mm. What the government you will publish it is there. It's verifiable. Mm. Everybody has access to it, mm. except somebody that doesn't want to check mm. or doesn't want to read. Mm -hmm. The facts are there. Mm. You know what goes to the state, you know what goes to the local government. Mm. Now, you have road projects, mm -hmm. the cost of road projects, there is none that is facts are not there. So sometimes they will say, publish the figure on the cost of this. I said to the best of my knowledge, even growing up, even knowing you know, better, what you see, you will see a signboard. You see the number of kilometers of the road that is being built. Mm. You see the construction company mm. doing it. You see their clients. Mm, I've never, either. it's never written anywhere. I've never seen that anywhere. Mm. I said, why should our own be different? No, you know. No, I'm coming. Okay. I'm coming. So now I said, because people beat. Mm. You know, some persons. It's just this level. Like, some persons who were busy wasting that time without knowing that people were going to Ministry of Works mm. to register, going to the due process office to register. They didn't when they continue to waste that time until they realize that this is what they need to do. They started going there. Mm. And you can't go there without seeing the process of bidding, without seeing the companies that bid it. Mm. Okay? Mm. Now, it was... And, of course, you have uh, the, the, the single source, mm. that of bidding, mm. just like you had the Julius Beja. Yes. Because this is great A road, it's a strategic road, mm. and we didn't want to throw it off for every... They can waste our time mm. in the name of bidding. We needed to use a construction, a reputable construction company that has the capacity to give you what will be sustainable mm. to do so. So there is nothing that is hidden. So when they talk about transparency, yes, people have every right to ask questions. Yes. The state doesn't belong to any individual. Good, good. Okay? Mm. So we don't feel offended when people ask questions. The only thing we ask that people should ask questions in, in an honorable manner. We will take up, we will respond to the questions you are asking. If 
we say this project has been done mm. and you are doubting. We say this is what has been done. This is what is on ground. This is what is being done. That is what is about to be done. Mm. And sometimes people go to the website and look at the, the quarterly budget performance report mm. and misunderstand the descriptions mm. and fly with whatever figures they like mm. and use that to form the basis for discrediting you. Okay? Mm. Okay, now, for example, there is a... Uh, what is called um, societal reorientation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In budget description, societal reorientation. Don't forget that this uh, description on nomenclature mm. was created by the uh, Nigerian uh, Governors Forum. Mm. In conjunction, I think, in line with the other World Bank also. I'm not a financial person, but that is what it is. Okay. So that's societal reorientation. People who didn't know the meaning thoughts, so when they saw what was spent mm. under societal reorientation. They thought it was orientation, maybe creating awareness. Mm. Meanwhile, this was everything that had to do with the um, justice sector. Mm. Everything that was paid, spent in the payment of uh, judiciary staff, every single infrastructure that had been done there, you know, capital projects and all the rest of them, overhead. Everything is some so it falls under that societal reorientation. You see what is called there, what is called three plus this thing the name that nomenclature is not peculiar to Abia. Everywhere, if you go and check the budget report of other states, you see three planting. Three planting is a nomenclature, is a description, is a code. Mm. They have it has a code. So that is called everything beautification. Everything beautification, whether you are planting trees or you are planting mm, plants, you know, all the other things, activities there, mm. grass and all the rest of them, under tree planting. It's not just tree. tree. Because somebody was saying, show us the tree. You know that kind of thinking. <laughs> now you heard governor office, mm. governor's office, mm. what was spent mm. in governor's office. And they were quoting billions. Of course, the billions are real. The amount you saw there are real. But the problem is misconception, lack of understanding of what it means. Even and I've been able to explain this. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, the governor's office is not Alex Oti's office as an individual, as a governor. Mm. In the governor's office, before we came, and this is something that has been there, of course, we've taken a bill to the House of Assembly to move those departments and agencies that are under the office of the governor back to the parent ministries, including Abia State Orientation Agency, mm -hmm. including ASEPA, Mm -hmm. including uh, Aspens, mm. including Abia Transport, mm. including Abia State uh, Traffic Management, mm -hmm. including Fire Service, mm. and all the rest of them. So, these parastatos were domiciled and are still domiciled under the office of the governor. So, every cobo spent in any of these agencies, you know we'll what, what you spend in ASEP alone, mm. whooping. Mm. So every cobo, everything, whether a capital project, whether it's uh, for payment of salaries mm. and all the rest of them, everything, are captured under the office of the governor. So some persons now began to think that that's where money <laughs> squandered by the governor. So we can only explain as much as we can. Mm. Okay? But it's incumbent on people to humbly ask questions on, so questions on subject matters they do not know. You don't just misrepresent because those agencies under the former government, people working in those places were being owed several months of arrears. And on assumption of office, Governor Alex Soti was also clearing these arrears. So when the expenditures were being summed up at the end of every quarter, that was, hey, he spent, this is what he used to eat, he used to drink, you know, those kinds of things. But that is the price you must pay. We are not infallible. That is the truth. We are not infallible. But the pictures they are painting there, the things they are saying there, they are just simply ridiculous. Somebody, for example, there is a guy that is abroad that is always attacking Alex Oti, doing video and all kinds of things. He went and shared the documents. He said, Anambra spent 18 million on security for <laughs> six months. They are still look at what Alex Oti spent. Look at what Alex Oti You ask yourself, is this... Is, is this person normal? How could you imagine that any government, even the local government, cannot say they spent 18 million in two months, let alone a state spending 18 million in, 18 million in six months? They were, the person was making reference to a number. So, because we are doing 
a budget rep uh, report that is faultless, visible, verifiable, open. The person doesn't know that we could have indulged in all kinds of manipulation, manipulations and churn out whatever we like. But we have not been doing that. Because that also determines our rating by World Bank and all the rest of them. When they see the details, see that these things are factual. What we pre presented are the facts. A unit of a Hilux vehicle is how much? Because we launched Operation Crush. Mm. And because the person was talking about the governor's security vote. Because we launched Operation Crush. How many Hiloxes do you have there? Dozens. How much do you spend on the soldiers, on the police, on the DSS, on the civil defense, on a weekly basis? Why were we able, how were we able to tame the terror that was ravaging Lok Panta and the other parts of Umunochi? I said a unit, a unit of Hilox. Is there anyone you can get at anything less than 70 million but, as we but, speak but at I, this point? But I can uh, remember vividly during the campaign also, yes. uh, uh, Governor Alice what he said about uh, um, um, security votes yes. that he will not touch security votes. So why back again to be touching the security <laughs> vote. No, no, it's a simple question. Thank you. Answer. Thank yes. you. Thank mm. you. I'm happy. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Is it sweet I'm happy. <laughs> 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 All right. So I'm actually happy you asked mm. this question. Mm. You know, that is why misconception is a very dangerous thing. There is even no governor on earth that will tell you that he cannot use security vote to work. What is security vote? Because I listened to uh, the person I made reference to, the guy I made reference to, saying that uh, Alex Oti has taken how many billion security votes that this money, you don't account for it because the security vote belongs to the money. I was laughing. I said, look at this person. Who told anybody that security vote belongs to the governor? Security vote does not belong to you. It belongs to the state. There is no money that comes to the state that is not accounted for. So security vote is the force provided for the governor to use in fighting insecurity. What the governor said Making reference to what we had in the past, where people were dipping their hands to take our security vote for their personal use, the governor said, I will not touch your security vote. I do not need it. That was what the governor okay, said. Okay, is it what he said? Yes. Because we the have governor to... said, yes, bring it. Mm. The governor never said he will not use it. No. I will not touch a security vote because what people were doing, we had a situation when we heard that some people were taking 700 million mm. because of that misconception, because of that misconception that security vote belongs to the governor. He can use it. No. The drones that we have bought, what would the governor have used to buy the drones that were used to fight kidnappers at Lock Panther and other criminals to buy the Hilos vehicles, to pay the, uh, the security people on a weekly basis, to do all kinds of things, trackers and all the rest of them, work with all the things that have been done. So does it mean the former government were in doing all this? Well, you have been here. No, because if we are <laughs> quantifying most of this security, it's not okay, something okay, okay, so if you okay, check so, the last government, okay, so, this so, government. So, you were here. I'm happy. You are a media person. You are grounded. Yes. You are on ground here. Yes. You were here when we were raising the alarm. When the former government was leaving. Mm. You saw people were disappearing with even tables. You can imagine if somebody could run away with tables and televisions and fans. You can imagine what the person would do to vehicles. Did you see any left behind? They disappeared with everything. I remember, I'm sure you know, I issued releases on behalf of Dr. Alex Oti. We made noise about it. We had pictures and videos when some persons they were living in the night. There was even a friend of mine who was a, a former appointee of the governor. Mm -hmm. When I wrote about that thing, he replied then. He said we are ignorant. That uh, he's, for example, that when he was working, that uh, he came to a government house, he had his own personal generator. <laughs> yes, yeah, you know the person I'm talking about. But I, I said... Know. But your own personal director in government house. So, uh, so that tells you, that paints a, a terrible picture of but, what but did you did. Did you come with your own generator? How could that have? <laughs> That's a new dawn. Those things happened in the old Abia. And we're in the new Abia. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, so there is no room for such so things. If we have challenges, the challenges must be solved collectively. You don't begin to everybody, if individuals, so it's, it's to become now sitting to see such spectacles, you know, uh, 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 in our government houses, it's not in anybody's interest. So, we are sanitizing everywhere. What we are doing with our security vote is verifiable. Okay, look at Lok Banta. You knew how uh, the market was. You knew what happened there. You knew how a lot of people lost their lives. The place was becoming a no-go area. People, those who 
uh, you know, uh, would want to go to Enugu. We are afraid to go back. Look at the, the uh, We are not saying we've solved all the problems, mm. but people could see what is on ground. So we are confronting these problems and the facts are there. So, in summary, in the area of uh, that the transparency we talked about, like I said earlier, we are not fallible. We are open to scrutiny. We are open to corrections. We are open to amendments. But the most important thing is that we are very conscious of what we are doing. We are very committed to writing our checkered history. You know, I was going to, uh, 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 when I, I started, I was going to talk about some of the things we have done in mm -hmm. the area of uh, waste management. Good. Okay. You and I <laughs> have lived here. You knew how the state was, especially Abba. Today, Abba is becoming a reference, a positive reference point, courtesy of what the present government has done in the area of waste management. Fazi, as we speak, and this is subject to your own independent investigation, people will pay as a levies. People will be served demand notices. But this is a government that came on board on the 29th day of May. Till this moment, nobody can claim that this government has served him any demand notice. Nobody can tell you that he has paid a dime as, as a bad fee. But this government, why? Because we want to so organize the place. We want to, first of all, give the people the required services. By this time, a lot of people would have paid tens of thousands without receiving the necessary services. But look at what the government is doing. Go to Abba. As I speak to you just a few days ago, uh, the UN Habitat has invited the, the DG of uh, GADA, Greater Abba Development Authority, and the General Manager of ASEPA, Mr. Bonne Okreke, to Egypt later in the year. They want to hear them talk about what they did to bring what the present situation in Abba, to turn things around in Abba. Mm. We were shocked to when we received that invitation. So that tells you that people outside this place are monitoring what you are doing. Because Abba was notorious in the area of uh, refuse, in the area of waste management, things are changing. So we are taking it step by step. We are moving from not just collecting waste to now to the next phase of it. When you talk about uh, 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 waste to wealth and all the rest of them. Mm. So we want to so organize our state. A whole lot of things are happening. A whole lot of things are happening. You talk about the area of uh, road infrastructure. You see how everywhere is opening up. And the waste management area, because I need to... Uh, say it that we now have a separate boat in Abba, Omaha and Ohofia. Go to Ohofia, you are from Ohofia, I'm happy you are going. Just go and move around Ohofia, see what is happening. A whole lot of things are going to happen there in the next few weeks to ensure that Ohofia, because what you have is Abba, Omaha and Ohofia. But over the years, Ohofia was now abandoned, isolated and made to look as if it's uh, one uh, small village. Mm. Meanwhile, Ohofia is a city. Thank God. Okay, mm. so what we are doing there is to completely turn the infrastructural state of uh, Hofia around, ensure that as a, they have their zonal office, we have a deputy DG in charge of Abia North, or Hofia is the, the headquarters. And that is where a lot of people have been employed in that area to help clean the place and make it look the way it should live. So if you are from Hofia and you have what you're doing, you have the enable infrastructure, you have... Uh, Electricity, I know you people have power issues which will be solved. We also have in my own community. When, when, when is it going to be We also solved? have our own problem. <laughs> so by the time all these problems are solved, you see, a lot of people, this rural urban migration mm. would have been dealt, you know, uh, a serious blow. That is what we are doing. So in the area of road infrastructure, just uh, earlier today, when uh, the Honorable Commissioner for Information and I briefed the press, we... We did tell them that more nine roads, nine roads, totaling about, I think, 40 something to 50 kilometers have been approved by the government. Over 50 kilometers have been approved. Nine more roads. You have one uh, in Bende, you have uh, uh, Umaya South, you have uh, Nisi Alangwa, mm. um, PSC Alangwa North, mm. then you have uh, Obingwa, you have uh, uh, some other places, some other places. So, the rules, I will bring the details. Does it mean Ohafia is not included? <laughs> no, you, more especially if you, the local government, we have Ohafia, the local government is in Ebemo Ohafia. Yeah. Does it mean that Ale Soti doesn't know anything about Ebemo or he doesn't want to do anything about Ebemo? Our roads are bad. Roads there are bad. Uh, Understand the, the, me? <laughs> roads there are bad. So, because you need to do something there. 
when he you because know, I even know Afia people voted him. Uh, so, so let him do. Let as him as, bring, I, as far as I'm mm, concerned, mm, you people are uh, your own advantage is massive, mm. and you should know without being told <laughs> uh, hey, that a lot of things are happening and a lot of things are going to happen. Uh, but our okay. governor will say, "Don't wear your local cap." Okay. Uh, mm. So when is when when we held our uh, meetings? Because I, I, I have meetings, gone round. I have gone we and many many people are here. They need to do something about it. If you want to say. Uh, yesterday, see, they wrote to my plate. The governor said, "You are wearing your local cap." That's not, that is how how who we are. You know so we want to do what is impactful, what okay. is mm. So if you look at what we are doing in the area of road infrastructure, the one of the roads that have been approved now for construction or construction mm. is the Tower Onimo Road, which is mm. going to be a dual carriage mm. from Tower to Onimo, so that if you are coming into Abia, you know that you are in the new Abia. Of course, Walker. I don't know when last you visited Umweka as is. From Owerenta to make a job as massive job because we've already paid compensation to those people who the properties are going to be affected. Uh, what, what I notice is uh, most of these roads are reconstruction, not a new road. So, no, what do you mean by reconstruction? No, you know, you know, you, you know, you know uh, we have new roads. Mm, new mm, roads is just mm, a virgin road mm, when you open okay, a virgin okay, road. Okay, so okay, so if you have decayed, completely broken. No, no, roads, no, no. I'm not saying. I'm no, not saying no. those. What, what I'm saying. Are these you start from the known okay. to the unknown. Okay. For example, the 21.7 kilometer road that the governor flagged off uh, in uh, that uh, crisscrosses uh, Isia Langwa, North, South, to Bingwa, uh, you know, the Virgin Road, the Eluama uh, Guinea Road in uh, Isukwato. Is there are many roads. And then there is another one in Okwa. It's also a Virgin Road, that part of the nine that has been approved. Okay. So there are reconstructed and newly so constructed now the, the 108 you know that thing has been okay so okay so let me go to let me go to that one <laughs> you know you know some people just want to make out something out of nothing the the, the, the i think the most difficult thing is to criticize this government in the area of road construction so the government was specific on what he said okay mm. that we have been able to rehabilitate you know so 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 number of roads mm. By direct labor, using workers from Ministry of Works. Mm. These are rehabilitated roads. Some are long, some are short, and they are scattered everywhere. So the person that uh, came here. Because somebody said, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. He said, can't here, that, uh, uh, It's okay if I can't take potholes. It's good. People were here, and the bottles didn't matter to them. Mm. And those, those things matter to us now, and we are doing them. Mm. Okay? So. You know, when people want to take on us, I think they should lay hand on things that, uh, you know, uh, that are worth it. If you just begin to be petty, say, hey, how many let us when you go and count the roads, you know that there are roads scattered left, right, and center being done by this government. If you move around on my head, you see, you, we knew how it was. Mm. You go to World Bank, you go to uh, Ehimli. I don't know when the last time you went to Ehimli, you, you move around, you, you'll be shocked. Beautiful. With the street lights. In the spirit of light up Abia. Everywhere you build the roads, you put street lights. Go to from Ojuku Bank Axis. You know how they will move down to that place they call Ukumba and all the rest of them. All of them have been fixed. Street lights coming up. Move the street lights still moving down. They've just passed uh Mazinam the Canal's house. Mm. They're going down from the other side of it. Uh, they also put up the street lights. So that is how it is everywhere, different parts of Fumba here, different parts of Abba. So if somebody is saying, ah, so that you, we can't even be so petty. So that uh, if we reconstruct a kilometer road, we come and write it down, we start numbering them. You understand? It's just that because when you are putting these things down, you know the places. So we, we can't condescend so low. If the person is doubting what we have done, we can move around and tell you. If we say we have done this in area of infrastructure, I think we show you some of them. The people are seeing and feeling them. So it's actually difficult. And that is why whenever Governor Lexoti goes... We are talking about physically. Mm. You see the reactions of our people. Because these people have lived in this state over the years. They knew the situation. They faced it. This is not just a week, a month or two, uh, two months ras rasmatas where mm. people just clap and you would think we will No. The tempo is sustained and people are feeling the impacts. People are feeling the impacts. The operation light up Abia. Move around on my head. You see something different. You go to Abia, the same thing. So we are conscious of what we are doing. In the, look at the old secretariat, old worker secretariat. Don't know the last time you visited. Yeah, Have you uh, gone there? Yes. You see what they are doing there? It's a beautiful spectacle. Mm. Something beautiful to behold. Look at the Jack Building 
You know how many years it was abandoned? It was in a state of abandonment. The Jack building, building was abandoned during the government of former Governor T. A. Hodge. It was not touched until this government came. The contractor did the one abandoned because they refused to pay him. We swung into action. We didn't change the contractor, just like we've done in some other houses, including road projects. Once we see that you have the zeal and the capacity to work, take it up. We didn't start changing anything. And go there and see how beautiful the Jack Beauty is. And that is why the staff of uh, uh, Minister of Local Government and Chief Tensor Affairs, I, and the head of service, as well, no, not head of service, if there is another this thing that have moved into that place. That's how it should be. The old secretariat was falling off. I'm sure you knew. It was abandoned completely. Nobody was nearing the building because mm. people were afraid of being killed. Go there now. It's, it's just something extraordinary. The place has been turned around. Completely reconstructed, rejigged and everything. Those Ministry of Education and Health are moving into that place. That is how ministries are run. That is how government should be. Not this one. Uh, 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 a director or Minister of Health will be in Jerusalem. The other person will be in Jericho and all the rest of them. Mm. So there is a difference. And people can see and feel the impacts of this government. All right, still on political perspective, we are going down to the main game of the day about uh, Abia State politics. Now on the November 2nd, the local government elections. And we've seen a lot of things that have been happening in Abia State concerning the Labour Party. Mr. Ferdinand. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not for you who oh, Abians would like to know the situation and things that have been happening in your uh, party, Labour Party. So, um, we've noticed that uh, you people want to put to other party, <laughs> which you've not made it publicly and we'd like to hear from you because we don't have much time from now to the second of the just like uh, barely two weeks plus. So, mm -hmm. how are you people going to... That, 2nd November is visible for the election. So all these things are what Abians would like to hear. Though apart from that, there are some people that have been having issues about the processes of uh, the primaries and uh, uh, one came to our studio talking about, uh, uh, personally, he was just taking personally to you about uh, how they sub change or uh, uh, singly uh, picked uh, another person instead of his brother. So all these <laughs> things are things we would like to know because he, uh, he also mentioned that uh, the governor told him that uh, he will not do the same thing other administration have done, that he is not interested. What he needs is somebody that will be... So all these things is what we want to hear from you, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, first and foremost, uh, primaries are intra-party activities. So, you must be a member of a political party to be bothered, to be concerned about how a political party does its primaries. And that is why by the Electoral Act, you don't have the locus to challenge the outcome of or the conduct or the processes of the primaries of another party. If you were not a member of the party, in fact, if you had not taken part in the primaries, as an aspirant, so you will not have the grounds to even challenge it. So, we cannot pretend that we do not have issues in our party. We have issues in our party. Just like some other political parties have their own issues. And because we have issues, we decided to apply the best of political strategy to regulate of it. Uh, we are told in politics that the difference be between mission and vision is strategy. And we needed to get our strategy right. And as far as I'm concerned, we succeeded in getting it right. Mm. So, we are not a government that uh, adopts the instrument of fraud as a strategy. And that is why nobody, Governor Lexoti cannot tell you, uh, yeah, I will give you tickets, like the, it was obtainable in the past, which was one of the biggest problems that our predecessors had. They will promise you, they will promise me, they will promise your friend, they will promise my friend, they will collect money from all of us, they will make us to go and spend. After do, you, spending. do you have evidence? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I don't know. <laughs> so, they will make them to go and spend. Then after spending through the news, you will still give it to who? The person that nobody even knew. Somebody may have concluded arrangements to give to. And now we say, we do not want a rancorous primary. We do not want it. We do not want recurrence primaries. That it is by consensus or affirmation 
stakeholders put heads together and choose the person you would want to run. Councillorship is such an inconsequential position for Governor Lexoti to condescend low to the point of coming to pick who will be a councillor in a particular ward. You have 184 wards. So it's even an insult for the person to come here, the person that came here, my guy for that matter anyway, mm. that came here and was a rabbling. So I don't think he knew what he was saying. But there's no need to dignify him with, uh, because I had made it clear after he did his video that he contacted me and that is the truth. He knows, uh, he admitted. He contacted me and I decided to put in words for him. They from whom I had not. Okay? And like he rightly stated there, I even spoke to uh, a federal lawmaker from our party who also promised to assist. After everything, the federal lawmaker said, okay, and he wouldn't want to be seen to have usurped the powers of the people. It's not what it let the people decide whoever will go. I completely agreed with him because I had told him that if the guy is popular, let the right things be done. That was my position. Mm. So I got back to him. I said, we, I will, I said, this is what the honorable member said. Mm. In fact, he was the one that called me back on his own to say this. So what will happen? We will look for a way to get your brother accommodated. He could be a supervisory counselor. He was happy. I mean, my guy, the guy mm. that came here, he was happy. Okay. So I didn't even know he had gone to, like he admitted, I had gone to send the governor a message. Telling the governor, the way he put it, that the governor will help him put his brother in his list. <laughs> and of course, the governor replied to him and said, no, we don't have a list where I put it, but the stakeholders in different ones will choose. So it's incumbent on you to go close to your stakeholders, to lobby. Politics is about lobbying, mm -hmm. about consultations. So it was incumbent on him to go and do that. So if you didn't do that, and the more, because even when he did a video, I saw some person from his place who we were lambasting him and saying, even if your brother contests 100, 100 times, you know, he will not win. So sometimes people think that uh, coming to social media to shout and do the, the, the basis. That is why some of us, whatever we do, we ensure that we are at home. We are on ground in our wards. That's what we do at all times, starting from 2015. We've always done that to ensure that some of us are on ground. You know? So we don't just make noise on social media and disappear. So... What happened was that stakeholders and go and look at the, you know, the people that are running, whether they are running on general level, but we have every right to form alliance. If there is a problem, if there is fire on the mountain, you need to apply wisdom <laughs> to run. You understand? So the most important thing is that what we have done, look at the faces. Anybody who wants to be honest will know that the people that have been picked are people who have been with us. People who are known, who are known faces, who were not imported. So anybody comes to tell you, hey, they are not Labour Party, they are not this, they are not that. They are being dishonest. They are being ridiculous. So if it doesn't suit you, if it doesn't favor you, you now decided to destroy or tell lies about every other thing that has been done. It's okay. That's what you see in politics. But the most important thing is that we have challenges and we needed to apply wisdom, to apply the right strategy to overcome the challenges. And we're overcoming those challenges with speed and we're making progress and by the special grace of God you know come uh, November 2nd our candidates will be returned because we are on ground we are popular we are campaign we are, have, the campaign is taken off they are telling people what we are going to do and people already have confidence in this government uh, and we naturally believe in whoever Governor Alex Soti is supporting on whatever platform and that's exactly what is going to happen so uh, most of this let me start from you are you still in labor or you, you're in the other part because we have been seeing different parties <laughs> we want to know just it's a simple question i'm because, still in labor okay you're in labor yes supporting somebody <laughs> in another party all right um let's go down to the south east uh, um national chairman uh, vice chairman mm. uh ck igara last uh weekend was arrested and uh, was taken to um, to the area command from area command with what we had from area command to um, other states command to state CID and what transpired is actually what we've had uh, from the police and also from the Labour Party um, uh, about uh, extortion and also impersonation. So we want to know, because when we interviewed him on phone, he asked a question. 
who is impersonating? Is it him or the OT? So all these things are things we I know you are not the spokesperson of Labour Party, though, but is your party because you yes. are, he said you are still in Labour. So yes. we want to know if you are in Labour and most of these things are happening. Do you want to tell us that you don't have idea? But we want to hear from your own side of what okay, has happened. Okay, so, mm. yeah, thank you. To, a, to an extent... Because I'm, your, your principal was fingered also. Mm, mm. To an extent, I mean, they know of what is happening. Okay. So I cannot pretend not to be aware. First and foremost, um, the Labour Party, our, our brother, our friend, C.K. Gara, was our state chairman. Of course, he resigned, resigned to contest for the present position he occupies. On the basis of that, he handed over to the the then zonal chairman South. On mm. um, Mauti was the zonal chairman South. Mm. So by their constitution, he was the person that he was supposed to hand over to, and he peacefully handed over to him. And because I know, to the best of my knowledge, that both of them have very good relationship. They've had good working relationship. You know, politics. A lot mm. of funny things happen. Yes, yes. You understand. So now. The issue at the national started. First and foremost, you know that our governor, Dr. Lesoti, has absolutely nothing against uh, Bastard Julius Sabure. And he knows that. They all know that. So if I, just like the governor explained during the inauguration of the caretaker committee, when we had our leader, Mr. Peter B, we had our vice uh, um, presidential candidate, Dr. Dati, and the rest of them. The governor did explain, uh, for, following the discovery by INEC that the tenure of uh, Barisaburi had expired, they refused to recognize him. This is not our own creation. You know we have been supporting him. Anybody who has followed the activities will know Mr. Pito B has been supporting Aburi. Dr. Lesoti has been supporting Aburi. Okay? But you cannot continue to support somebody blindly at the expense of the party, or the generality of the people. So they went for a function, INEC conducted function, and they asked him out, they walked him out. So INEC is a body that conducts election. And they said there is a document, there's an evidence that his tenure had expired. What were we supposed to do? The governor did the needful by bringing this to his attention. This is what is happening. Let's look for a way to solve this problem so that we all don't get consumed. You know, sometimes when you are playing politics, politics is a, a game of wisdom. You need to be very, very careful. Because assuming I'm your chairman, and I know that me occupying this position could endanger your ambition, and because of my selfish interest, I put your ambition at risk, you know that you could be provoked to the extent of even <laughs> taking an action that nobody, you know, may have imagined. Unfortunately, the man didn't accept. Like I said, he went for a meeting and it down on him that the governor wasn't talking nonsense because the governor had even brought it to his attention before he went for that meeting. This is the information I have. So we tried to look for a way to resolve this problem. The leaders had to take a decision, which was what led to the formation of a caretaker committee. And of course, he, he had already gone to court on a different matter. It wasn't even after that. Caretaker committee innovation that he went to that uh, court. Okay? Uh -huh. So now court now gave judgment is in favor. Of course, we are under obligation to obey the judgment of the court. But prior to that time, there was no problem between the state chapter and the national. Mm -hmm. There was no problem between the now chairman, Honorable Imauti, and uh, my brother, Honorable C.K. Gara. Mm. In fact, the chairman, Imauti, relinquished his office because there's the national chairman, South, does not have an office. Ordinarily, they should have an office in Enugu, have a standard, mm. but they do not have. Even the Labour Party office should have a normal here. here. There was none now when we came on board. You remember that that's, that has been our mm. after office. Mm. Mm. Even when we left there, we were at APC, we were still paying for it. Mm. So when we came, we now, when I saw the door handed over the office. So the, uh, uh, the state chairman relinquished his own office for Honorable Gara. He moved in there. Honorable Oti moved into another smaller office. So, because of the romance, the marriage between uh, uh, our brother Igara and the national, according to the information provided by our Bluti, he took uh, the documents and other important uh, valuables and disappeared. Of course, it wasn't there that he was selling the forms he was selling. 
So why are you now usurping the powers of the state chairman? When you know you are not the state chairman, you are now running activities as if you are the state chairman. We have laws now guiding the party. And creating a problem where there is none is laying the foundation for crisis. So when you were now selling forms in the name of the party, there is only one Labour Party in Abia. Nothing had invalidated the existence of that state ESCO, which on every moment is the chairman, no law, no court, has invalidated his position. So it was on that basis that they got angry. I didn't even know. They got angry and wrote the petition they wrote to the police, which led to the arrest of uh, Rebbe Gara. Of course, when the governor heard about it, the governor was very angry. So it's not necessary. They should allow him to go. Nobody, he doesn't want to be associated with any kind of arrest. That's unnecessary, giving him undue publicity and attention. That was what the governor said. The governor was very angry when he learned of the arrest. Because, of course, the governor could not have given his consent for him to be arrested. Okay, so all the things that are shouting in the media plant are people just looking for attention. You know, when you are popular, when you are a reputable name, people want to use your name to catch crews. They want to use your name to publicize themselves and make themselves relevant. But any smart politician, you know, we had, you know, we had been in opposition, <laughs> so we know how these things work, okay? When we were in opposition, there was a time we had two factions, and people, a lot of people <laughs> were just using uh, the name of Alex Oti and his, uh, that, that closeness to him to make money off the then former government who was looking for who to pay and buy who. Okay? So what these people were just, the noise they are not making, that so excited. That was why the governor was even angry. No, the governor was very angry. The, but the arrest should not have happened. I don't want to be associated with that. That's not my style. So all these things that they, they, arrest, they arrest you for what? What threat do you even pose? For Christ's sake. We had won a general election. A national INEC conducted election from the opposition. Not once. And let alone we're in, in power. I've said conducted election. Our people are appreciative for what we are doing. So, which party are they going to vote? Who are the leader? Who, who, which leader are they going to follow as far as this election is concerned? Which leader are they going to listen to his instruction? You can't tell the blind that there's no salt or pepe in his food. So, now the governor is supporting which party now? The, the governor is the governor of the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. He's in the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. But one thing you must take to the bank is this. Politics has its own intrigues. Okay? We have candidates. Popular candidates. We have chosen. Some are still in labor. Some have gone to ZLP. And we have chosen how to support our candidates. If we consider you popular enough to deserve our support, our solidarity, our vote, we put in everything, we throw in everything to ensure that you are returned on the 2nd of, February, uh, of November 2024. So, we are supporting our candidates on individual basis. But me, my position is that I have a lot of candidates and friends who are running on the platform of ZLP, Zenet Labour Party. Mm. Okay, you know, from the Z Labour, you go again to the Zenet of Labour. <laughs> but they are saying, you see, the Labour Party... Uh, is the party that the, uh, that brought the governor, and you, and you, now you are abandoning that Labour Party to the Senate one. Okay, so you have okay, so, okay, so so what the governor is actually doing is to help consolidate that Labour Party that brought him to power. Mm. Okay, what Mr. Pito B is doing is to help consolidate that Labour Party. Mr. Pito B was not finally did not finally emerge. But he is passionate and committed to ensuring that the party survives. They are on the same page. The cream de la cream of Labour Party are on the same page. And they are being very altruistic about it. This crisis has been managed and managed and managed. And there is no doubt about the fact that these leaders have been with Abure, have supported Abure. It's a very simple thing. Are we going to be perpetually tied to one's individual and personal ambition? at the expense of millions of people who desire change in different parts of the country. So there is nothing we have done. If anything, we are trying to salvage the party. We are trying to give that party the national outlook that it, desire, it desires. So we are doing everything to protect them. So even the litigation that is ongoing, we didn't initiate any. Okay, But no. we don't have any choice than to 
ensure that we pursue it vigorously to the end until that comes to an end, then we'll take the final decision on what to do. All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, I will use, am I going to use Chief uh, Comrade or uh, Honorable uh, Fender Ekoba for coming today uh, in our studio? Also, with I know you people that are watching, you've picked one or two things, and you know, most times we talk about information. We say information is power. People will stay out there and be blabbering. They will say, This did not happen. This, not. I know, with what he has said today. You have picked one or two things. I know you'll come back again here to, uh, sure, in our today because um, ABN is open place for anybody to come and air his view. But what we don't take is when you bring uh, all these impersonation and some other talking about uh, blackmailing and some other things. We don't take it here in our studio. But we'll put things right to make sure you that is watching ABN, you that is following ABN, will give you the best. Thank you, Mr. Fednan. What is your last word? Thank you, the, the good people of Iber State. Uh, our position has always been that this is our state. This is our government. Uh, the state belongs to everyone. We are under obligation at all times to play our part to ensure that our, our state you know, does well in all aspects. We are committed to writing our checkered history. Governor Alex Soti is so committed, so passionately committed to, you know, ensuring that our people have a sigh of relief in all aspects of governance, to ensure that our people live better, to ensure that our state is developed, to ensure that Abia becomes a positive reference point. And it is in our interest for us to rebuild our state, to take our, make our state an Eldorado, so that um, some of our people that live inside the state, some of our people that uh, hit that too, you know, did not want to be associated with Abia, will be so proud of our state to come back here and invest. And that is why Governor Alex is creating the enabling environment. We are open to scrutiny. We are open to criticisms. We are open to corrections. The governor will always say, I am not afraid of making mistakes. If I make mistakes, I'll correct myself. I will take corrections. And he has made some mistakes and has corrected himself. And we are not afraid of doing that because that's the best way to serve the people. That's the best way to meet the expectations of the people. With this, some of these uh, disagreements, um, you know, it's natural. These things are natural in a democracy. We are, we are told that uh, 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 you agree by disagreeing. So we we'll continue to collaborate to ensure that uh, we develop uh, our state. We also encourage those in opposition to intensify effort. That's part of it. We were in opposition for years. <laughs> and so you people have graduated. We graduated. We are now veterans. So when you talk about opposition, we're experienced enough to know what you're planning to do. But then in the end, what we want is the best for Abia State. So thank you for being part of the program. All right, let, all. let me pick his word. He said, uh, we've met, Dr. Lesuti have made mistakes and also corrected it. Thank you for coming to our studio, Ferdinand Ekoma. Thank you for watching this wonderful program, ABN TV Political Perspective. You can join us on our social media handles, ABN on Facebook, ABN TV on YouTube, ABN TV on Instagram, ABN TV on TikTok, ABN TV on Instagram, or you download our app on Google Play Store, ABN Radio slash TV. Also, this is our website, www.abntv.com.ng. Bye for now.